Okay, so in this section, we are going to focus on publishing our app. So we finished all of the development. It's in its uh, it's in its finished state. Our our trust calculator app. Now you could of course add more to it, as we said at the end of the last lecture, um, but. We're done for now and you know enough now to be able to go ahead and create your own apps quite happily based on uh, everything that we've covered so far. So the last thing we got to do is just publish our app so that we can share it with people. So that's what we're focusing on in this section. In this lecture in this section, we're going to very, very briefly just talk about the differences between apps and workspaces. They are two different things that we need to be clear on uh, when we're when we're publishing um, our Trust Calculator app. So a workspace is uh, the thing that the end user interacts with. And so we're in my Victor account here and we're looking at the two different workspaces here. On the right, we have the workspace that corresponds to the finished version of this app that I previously built and embedded in the Engineering Skills website. So if you were on the Engineering Skills website and you are interacting with the, the, the app there, the Trust Calculator app, this is what you are interacting with. You are, act you are actually interacting with a workspace, okay? And the workspace is developed or built from an app, okay? So we have the app is the underlying entity which collects together all of the code, the logic, and it is an app that we publish our code to from our GitHub code space. So that's the underlying entity. And then when we want to share a usable version of that app with somebody, we generate a workspace from it. And it's the workspace that we share. We can embed it in a website or we can give somebody a link to go and visit the workspace and use, um, use our calculator. Uh, and so we'll talk a little bit more about it here over the next couple of minutes. But the Victor documentation actually does a good job of explaining and articulating the differences between apps apps and workspaces. And so I've linked to the documentation in the text lecture that goes along with this video lecture on engineering skills. Um, and so you can follow the link uh, to this page, which is basically how Victor themselves described the differences between workspaces and apps. And this is quite helpful um, to just have a read through. And in fact, there was somewhere on this page, you can't quite see where it is now, but somewhere on this page um, is the state, the following statement, which I actually found quite helpful when it came to, in my own mind, getting clear the differences between apps and and workspaces. And so it was this. If an app is the exe file, the executable file, the workspace corresponds to the fully installed version of the software on a particular machine. So that's a good way to think about it. It's a good proxy for uh, the, the, the concept of an app and a workspace. Okay, so if those are the workspaces in my Victor account, again, this one corresponding to the finished version of the app I've already built. And then we have on the left hand side, we have a development workspace. This is the one we've been interacting with. Uh, again, in your Victor account, you'll just have the development workspace. Um, that's the development uh, workspace we've been interacting with as we've been building our app. So we could launch this and we could see the app that we've been building up until this point. Or we could launch this guy, hit open here, and we'd open up the finished version of the app that you've seen on the uh, engineering skills website. So that's workspaces. And I know I've been referring to them as apps because it's just like ingrained at this point in my mind of, of you know, in being in the, the, the iPhone ecosystem. I have an image in my mind of what an app is. It's slightly different to what um, Victor are referring to an app as here. So you kind of have to relearn the terminology, right? So they're workspaces, right? They're the things that users interact with. Okay, the workspace, this one, for example, is on the right-hand side here. This is developed and built from an app, right? Now, if I go and see my apps in my account, we've got a single app. I only have one app at the minute, and that's the app that is used to generate that workspace, the finished version of the Trust Calculator on the on the Engineering Skills website. So this is an app, and an app can be used to create a workspace. You can see here, I can click this button here and create a workspace from this app. Now, I've already done it, and you've already seen it on the other page, and um, but that's basically how it works. So that's the, that's the basic idea, right? The, the workflow is this. We create an app in our Victor environment here, in our dashboard. We create an app. We then publish our code to that app. Okay, that's the next thing, right? So then we have an app with code that has been published to it from our GitHub code space. Grand. That brings us to this point right here. Then once we're there, we can create a workspace based on that app, and that will get us to this point here where we actually have a workspace and that's the thing that we can share with anybody who wants to use our calculator. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Um, again, if you're a little bit confused about what apps are versus workspaces, that's perfectly okay. It took me a while to wrap my head around it too. Um, it will all become a lot clearer 
in the next lecture where we actually walk our way through that publication process. It's, it's a very, very quick process. It's painless. Um, but what it will do is it will help you understand um, and really embed in your mind the differences between apps and workspaces. So take a break and we'll come back and finish this thing out in the, the next and final uh, lecture in this project. All right, so final final lecture here. Let's just bring this thing home and uh, publish our app. So we're going to do three things. It's a three step process, right? I kind of outlined it already in the previous uh, in the previous lecture. We're going to create an app in our Victor account in our dashboard here. In fact, let's jump over to uh, our app store here. Um, right, so we're going to create an app in two seconds. We're then going to jump back over to our code space and we're going to publish our code to that app. Then we'll jump back over here and then we will create a workspace from that app and that workspace is the thing we'll be able to share and at that point we'll be done. You'll have a, you'll have covered the complete creation and publication workflow uh, within the Victor environment. So right let's just uh, let's crack on here. So the first thing as I say I'm going to do is create an app. To do that we just hit the create app button here in the top right hand corner and that launches the app creation wizard. And so we can put in some information here. So we'll start off with a title. So I've just added a very basic title here and a basic description. If you're creating an app that you want to share with people um, you're probably going to want to provide a bit more information like putting in a long description and adding images and so on and so forth. But I'm going to rattle through this pretty quickly because it's all fairly self-explanatory stuff. So we needed a title and we needed a description. I'm going to skip the long description. Uh, we can add labels. So we can add some of these. Uh, Victor have already populated a list of labels. So we could add labels to this. Uh, so let me see what would make sense as a label. I wonder do we have structural? We do. Okay so we'll we'll tag it with structural hit next. We could add some images and um, obviously on the finished version of the app that I created I added some images um, and uh, like basically around the engineering skills branding. For now I won't bother but you could add whatever images you like here. We'll hit next on this and next up we have maintainers and so as it says here a maintainer uh, is somebody who can publish new versions of the app. Now I'm the only one operating in this account and so it's pre-populated uh, the, uh, the maintainers field with my email which is fine we can leave that as it is and at that point we're ready it gives us a bit of a summary here we've got the name of our app we have the description we've provided and obviously we've left the image blank but we can just have a quick overview here of everything make sure it's all okay and hit create and there we have it. We now have an app. This is basically a blank container, right? This is, there's nothing in that app at the minute. It's just a container that we can now publish our code to. Uh, so that brings us on to step two. And so we can jump back over to our GitHub code space where we're going to publish our code to this app. Okay, so here we are back over in the code space. What I can do, first of all, my app is running at the minute. The development version of my app is running. So I'm going to uh, cancel that and just stop it from running with uh, command C. So now we can do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is I want to see all of the apps. You don't have to do this, but it's kind of helpful to be able to see all of the apps that are available in my Victor account, right? So I'm going to type in Victor CLI and then just apps. All right. And there, we, let me just can drop that down and let me see, pull this up a little bit. And in fact, let me collapse that down as well. All right. So what are we seeing here down at the bottom? We can see the different apps, right? So we have one app here, which is actually the finished version of the app that you've seen in my account. And we've got um, a tag and some additional information. And more, more, more importantly, we've got the status is published. We have another version of the app you didn't see in the account because I archived it just to keep things simple. But that is uh, that was also a previous version of the app that I built as well. Actually, that's the version of the app I built while I was writing all of the lectures that are associated with this, uh, with this project. Um, but again, it's archived, so you don't see it. That's why it doesn't appear. Um, but it is still a, it's still attached to my account. And then we have the one we've just created. And this is the version of the app that I've been building as I've been recording these videos, right? So this is the version of the app. This is an empty app container. Look, it's been created, but not published. We haven't published any code to that app yet. So that's what we're going to publish um, our code to next. So in order to do that, we can basically hit Victor or type in Victor CLI publish. Now, Victor CLI 
and publish and that's going to kick off another bit of a wizard and it asks us which app do we want to publish our code to and so we can just cycle down through these obviously i want to publish to the top one here tutorial trust analysis so we'll hit enter and so we can basically just accept the defaults here and rattle on down through this process do i want to continue yes so just yes, yes, yes. And at this point, we've kicked off the publication process. So Victor is going to do its thing now. It could take a few minutes, depending on the size of your app. Um, but Victor's doing all the work in the background, basically, which is taking our code and publishing it to that empty app container that we created. So we're just going to leave this for a minute. It could be five minutes. I can't remember how long this takes, but we'll leave it and I'll come back when this is done um, and we'll pick up the process from there. Okay, so now we can see the publication process has finished. It only took a couple of minutes. So now we can head back over to our Victor account. Now you can see I'm back over in my app store in my Victor account. Now I haven't refreshed the page yet after we have published our code to this app, right? So before I refresh the page, I just wanted to point out that notice that once we created the app container, the empty container here, um, we can see that create workspace was grayed out. That's because there was no code published to this yet. Uh, and now once I refresh the page, it will reflect the fact that code has been published to this app and we'll be able to create a workspace from that. Uh, and in fact, before I do that, let's head back over here and just rerun the command uh, Victor CLI apps and we'll see sure enough that the trust the tutorial trust analysis app is now published okay so we've published code to it right so heading back over to our app store refresh the page and we now have the option to create a workspace from this app. Okay, so this app is the underlying entity that uh, all of our, our workspaces are, are built from or are developed from for this particular calculator. So for example, we can click on details here and we can see that we can look at the, we can look at the version history for this app and we can look at the details and we can edit the, the details for this app. Now, obviously the details are very bare bones at the minute, but if I go back, and I look at the details of the app that we've previously published, you can see that we've got some um, metadata here, we've got a description, and I could go in and edit these as well if I wanted to. So going back again to the app that we just published, the last step now is to create a workspace. So if I click Create Workspace, we'll see that we have the Workspace Creation Wizard opening up. So we can select the app code that we want to base this workspace on. And obviously it's the app code from the tutorial uh, trust analysis. So we can hit next and we can fill in a whole range of details, which are basically just going, it's basically going to mirror the details that we've already filled in for the, for the app. So I'll just put in a, a simple app name and uh, well, I won't bother with a description because we don't need one, but I'll put in an app name. We'll just say uh, trust analysis calculator and hit next. We'll leave all of the defaults. I won't bother with an image, but of course we could upload an image here for our for our workspace. We will set the visibility to public and then hit create. Excellent. So now we have a workspace based on our app, which itself was based on the code that we developed in our in our code space, our GitHub code space. So now we can actually open this app and interact with a shareable version of our app. So we're no longer we're no longer over here in the development environment. We don't need to open this development environment to work with our app or to use our app. Um, our calculator, I should say. Um, instead, we're going to open up the public version of it. So let's hit that next. And there we have it. So we now have a working version of our app that we can, I keep saying our app, a working version of our calculator, uh, which we can now share with the world, right? So what, what we could, well, we've seen how it works. So we won't go through how it works again. But if we hit share here, we can share a link to this guy, uh, or we could embed it uh, as an iframe in a, in a website, for example, share it on Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Um, so there you have it. You've covered the full, uh, the full gamut. In, in fact, let's actually copy this link and paste it into an incognito browser window just to just to show you that once you share this with someone you don't have to be logged you don't have to be logged into your victor account so i'll just spin up an incognito window here paste in our link and this is what anyone is going to see when they go ahead and uh, and visit your app okay fantastic so they can interact with it do trust analysis um, to their heart's content. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, the Just like as, as a quick, um, I suppose, motivator going forward, what I'd suggest you do now is you, this stuff is the clearest in your mind it's ever going to be after you've just finished this project. 
And you'll have learned a certain amount by watching me build this app. You've certainly got enough to um, get over that initial learning curve and that initial pain of using a new software because you've basically I've shown you how to do all the basic steps. But to really get good at using this platform um, to build apps, what you now need to do is go and build an app yourself. Build your own app either Start with this one and modify it or enhance it in some way or just, you know, pick pick a calculation that you do as an engineer on a regular basis um, and build an app around it because in that way you're going to really embed a lot of the things that you've we've touched on here. So we've, we've done a good range of things here. We've talked about how to accept user inputs um, both in terms of like directly inputting them into the app or uploading CSV files and parsing them. Uh, we've talked about how to handle calculations. We've talked about how to use and leverage external libraries, open seas in our case. Uh, and we've talked about data visualization. So you do have the bones of um, any number of different apps that you can now build using those sort of basic building blocks which we've demonstrated. Um, and I've really only scratched the surface with this particular app. There's so much more you can do. We can do 3D visualizations, map visualizations, all sorts of really interesting uh, ways to visualize data. And so that's uh, my sort of parting advice here as I wrap this project up. Don't stop here. Uh, this is only the start. This was only to get you going. Now what you want to do is pick something and go and build an app around it and then share it with people. Um, because I can I can already see there's a huge amount of utility in um, using a platform like this. I, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Jupyter Notebooks. That's my sort of my home environment where I build things. But sharing a Jupyter Notebook um, can be tricky. As I said, at the very, very start of this project, there's a bit of a barrier to entry for users uh, using a Jupyter Notebook. Um, but if you take whatever you're doing in your Jupyter Notebook and convert it into a user-friendly app that people can interact with like this for trust analysis um, there's a lot of value in that and I think it's a skill worth having um, and that's why I wanted to build this project so uh, that's basically it we'll leave it there for now I uh, hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you in a course or on a project or in a tutorial at some point in the not too distant future